Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can find email addresses for local lead gen uh, campaign. So if you're targeting local businesses um, anywhere around the world, I'm going to show you how you can do that all within Clay as well as uh, using AI. Uh, I'm going to run you through um, finding the uh, founders uh, email addresses and founders name um, for local businesses. Um, I'm going to show you the entire workflow. So first things first, the tool that I'm using is Clay. Um, so the way you want to do it is, uh, you know, most of the time, if you're trying to build a list around um, local uh, local businesses, then, you know, obviously LinkedIn is not going to be the most ideal place just because a lot of local business owners don't necessarily have a LinkedIn profile. So normally it's a lot easier if you do that. Um, if you try and build through LinkedIn for any other B2B area, but for local, it's a lot more difficult. Now, there are other tools like uh, D7 Lean Finder. Now, of course, you can also scrape Google uh, search and everything like that, and you can use scrapers like Appify and so on and so forth that allow you to build these lists out. Um, but the tool I'm going to use is Clay, um, and I do everything within Clay. Um, Clay almost combines kind of like uh, scraping with Google Sheets, um, plus like loads of different data providers. So the great thing here is I'm actually able to do a search for uh, local businesses with Google. Uh, with Google basically. And it is quite literally exactly the same as doing a Google search, except I don't have to worry about scraping the data, exporting that data, running it through somewhere and everything like that. I can do it all from one place. Um, so what I started doing, uh, and I'll give you just like a very quick overview of like what the campaign was, but basically we would find their uh, company uh, information um, by doing a Google search. Um, and then that would pull uh, information like their company name, their phone number, their address, their website. And then what we did was we scraped their website to find further information. So their description, then the like, you know, text, um, the body of the website and everything like that. Um, then we would also use AI to basically generate a first line. Um, based on the information that we found from their website. Uh, and then after that, we would also use AI to come up with some creative ideas that are individual. And I'll show you and break down like the prompts that we use and everything like that. And then we used uh, a tool called Clagent to basically find the uh, names of the owners. Um, and then we pushed the leads uh, into Smart Lead. And we also found the email addresses by doing a waterfall. Um, and then we pushed the leads into Smart Lead. So uh, let's break it down step by step. We started by basically pulling uh, information from a Google search. So we quite literally just typed in dental practices. And in this case, for this specific campaign, it was for New York, right? So dental practices, New York, and then you can set a radius. And then from that radius, it will basically pull all of the dental practices as if you're doing a Google search and you had the whole thing coming up, dental practices in New York. Um, and it, like I said, it pulls the company name, it pulls the phone number, it pulls the address, it pulls everything. And then you just map it out. Like this now the thing that we're most interested in is the website so with the website um what we want to do with it is we want to scrape the information from the website to find like a pool of text that then can be fed into ai so that ai can basically analyze that information and then uh create some kind of uh observation based on that information right because if we were to do this manually we'd have to go into in each individual website um and then basically pull uh, that information manually which would take ages and ages whereas with clay it literally saves like hours from doing that just with this one specific thing um so yeah we pulled the website description um so this is just like a blurb of the website uh seo description i believe um and then the uh text from the website so some of the sometimes the cell data size was too much to uh, read um but for a lot of times um you know you basically have every single word that's on the front page of the website it goes into here um, and then what we're able to do with that is put that information which is relatively jumbled up into AI and it's able to analyze that and then spit out um, relevant information that we need for uh, our email copy. Um, another cool thing about doing this and scraping a website is you're able to also able to find and scrape um, their like links. So Facebook and everything like that. So we can get the social links. So you could um, theoretically, you know, find their TikTok, you could find their Facebook, you could find their their um, Instagram and so on and so forth. And sometimes the emails are within that. So that's taking it a step further. If you're not able to find emails from just the website, you can also then pull the social links and then find their emails from there by scraping the social, uh, the, the, the social media account as well. All right. But for this, we didn't do that, but that's also another thing that you can do. So once we've got that, what we did was we want to start our emails off with a relevant observation, right? Now, a lot of times with local, it's a lot more difficult unless you're doing something based on like website traffic or Facebook ads and you're trying to say, hey, I saw that you're only getting X amount of visitors on your site or I saw that you're running these campaigns or these ads. You know, do you need some help with that basically? Um, so it's specific. But for this, we didn't do that um, just because I think the offer, if I remember correctly, was different. Um, so we really just wanted to make it 
somewhat specific and somewhat relevant. But again, with local, it's a lot more difficult to do this because they don't have as much information online about themselves. They don't have as much information as like a tech company and they're like new product launches and this, that and the other. They're just a kind of more boring business. So it's a little bit more difficult to kind of lead with that. So we just want something. Um, you can also test it out where you don't have this, but I just prefer to always have something that's a little bit relevant at the start. Um, and again, these could always be better, but basically what we did was we fed, uh, if I go to the actual prompt itself, um, so we fed, uh, so it said using the input, generate a sentence summarizing what a company does, what a company does. This is the input. And then it basically pulls from the website description that we pulled from the scraping the website, um, keep the output under eight words and use specific keywords from the input and complete the sentence with my prefix. This is the prefix. I was on your site and saw you. So basically just saying like, Hey, um, we just look, we looked at your stuff, right? Um, now, again, it could always be so much better and there's like la layers and levels to this, but this is just an initial one just to show you like, hey, this is possible. And then we just train it a little bit and so show, um, you know, a an example basically of what it should do. And then with that, it will then spit out all of these um, and it will do it again at scale. So you can see it like literally does it for all of them and it does it all within like less than, less than two, three minutes really. Um, and then, so the best ones are usually the ones that are, more specific um so so you uh yeah so some of these they're not they're not my favorite um and i actually quite against like doing um shitty personalization so we won't always use these but this is just a kind of like fail safe or catch all that kind of uh, will allow you to have some kind of relevance when you reach out um so the best ones are yeah the more specific that they can get like hey i saw that you do luxury appointments now the main important thing here between what's good and what's bad and why this still can work is because it ties into the rest of the email it's not irrelevant so if you just compliment or you say something that's irrelevant like hey i saw that you did this but then your offer is completely separate then it makes no sense but if you say hey i saw that you did this and or i saw that you do this we help people that do this right so you're tying your offer or you're tying the rest of your email back into the first line that's what makes it relevant if it's completely separate and like say hey i saw your latest linkedin post you know do you need accounting services like just no relevance or no like connection between those they have to connect so that's why it can still work um the next thing we did was just put the phones in a readable format so any of the ones here that are blank um they would then get put through hey just try to call you uh, on and then the number uh, but couldn't get through so at least then it's being specific this obviously we don't need ai for but it just means that the first line if they if we don't have this then it falls back to doing a using a phone number basically um the next thing which i think is really cool is creative ideas so with creative ideas continue uh, and edit here so yeah so with creative ideas what we're doing is we're using the input create three bullet points of created marketing ideas for dental practices the ideas have to be possible with social media marketing these are the input and then again we push it pull it the information back from the website um be specific and give unique advice the tips should help dental practices based in the us to offer uh better attract full arch appointments and so on and so forth right so we want to keep it short and concise and then um we didn't actually train it but you can train it and you can give examples and everything like that if you want now the cool thing about this is we actually use it in the follow-up email so we don't use this in the first email but it's another way of just saying instead of instead of going like hey i've got some ideas of how you could improve x and then can I send them across? You actually just send the ideas across like, hey, here's the ideas that could improve X, All right? And these are good. They could always be like way, way better. Um, and you just do that by doing more prompting and more sort of like layers to the prompting. Um, but, you know, the more specific they are, um, the better. So if, for example, the company on the website mentions that they do like luxury dental appointments or something like that. And it then in the creative ideas, you say like, hey, you could run a giveaway for luxury X, Y, Z then it's being specific to the re the relevance of that first line, if that makes sense. Um, or the relevance of uh, the, the, the actual like email and like who they are and what they do and things like that. Um, so the more relevant and more specific it is, the better. And again, you can train it up, but at least here you're able to actually get um, like individualized ideas that you can send across. And these are actually, they can be pretty good. Um, and these get like a really good response rate. So again, use this in the second email and the follow-up email um, and basically just say like, hey, um, you know, I won't say th thoughts, any thoughts on the last email, had a few ideas that might help you out with your social media campaigns. Here, here's, have you tried these out? And then one, two, three, and you're actually giving ideas that they can use so it's somewhat valuable right um and then if they like the ideas then they'll be like oh these are great thank you and then they'll respond to that cool so yeah that's that's something to test out again it needs a bit more work and refining but it gives you like an idea of a starting point starting point that you can use 
The next thing is finding the uh, owners or people who work there, their uh, names, right? So we want to make sure that we're finding uh, basically who to reach out to. We don't want to just say, hey, and then no name. Um, so we want to try and have as many of these names as possible. Um, so what we did was we used a feature called Clagent. Um, now, Clagent is basically like a scraper um, mixed with AI. So it's able to go onto a website and it's able to not just pull the whole information, but find specific bits of information, depending on what you tell it to, and it'll follow out and complete tasks. Um, so the prompt that I used was based on the input and then just put the website link in so it can go onto the website. It doesn't need to go. So you, you would use AI agent and AI differently. So AI would be once you've got a, bo a body of text to then interpret and analyze and pattern recognize. Whereas AI agent, you could feed it a link and it will go on the link and it will find that information. It will scrape, but it will scrape the specific information depending on what um, what task you gave it. So find the owner or founder of the company and output their full name if possible. Make sure to output only their full name and nothing else. If no owner is found, then the output of the name uh, of another member of the team and that may not be the owner. If there's no person, then just leave it empty, right? So we don't want anyone that we don't want... Um, it, it, we want it blank if there is no one, um, but we want them to try and find A. And if they can't find A, then I'll try and find B. And it works really, really well. And you can see here, if I just break down these, these, uh, it actually gives you a reasoning um, and it gives you the confidence and it gives you the steps it took. So it said visited this website. Um, the text meet the doctor is followed by the name of the owner, Jordan Reich, right? However, it's important to note this provided description, not direct, so it's associated with the link of the website. So what it's done is it's gone to the website and then it's found the about section that says meet the doctor. And then it's figured out that after meet the doctor, the name is there. So therefore it's more than likely that that is the name of the person. And then it's outputted that. And it's done that at scale for all of these ones. So if you're to do this manually, you'd have to literally go into every single email, uh, email, sorry, uh, website, and then find and like pull the information, whereas this does it completely automatically. So super cool feature that you can use. Um, and helps a ton. Um, and then next is, I think this was just a reiteration of the, the first lines I was playing around with it. Um, and then one thing that I did actually as well, which is just like a small personalization. And, and I always put the personalization in the PS. So if you're going to personalize, I always prefer to do it in the PS rather than in the first line. Um, but basically we wanted to say, hey, I saw that you had, you know, for example, 385 4.7 star ratings. Um, you know, good stuff. Um, just to kind of like show that we did a little bit of research basically. Um, so yeah, so that was that. And then the next thing is finding their emails, right? So there were two ways that we did this. Um, and if I just show you like some of the columns that I've actually hidden from before. Uh, so we did what's called a waterfall. So a waterfall is basically try and find their email address by going to Prospio, for example. And then if you can't find it on Prospio, then find Detagma, then try drop contact, and then try find email. Now, if it finds it on Prospio, it won't need to run on here. But if it doesn't find it on here, then it'll try and run and then it'll run on here. And if it doesn't find here, it'll run on here and so on and so forth. And that way you get as maximum data coverage. And then what you input is the domain, the full name of the person, um, and I think the company name, and then it'll try and find those emails. Now, if it finds those emails, then what it'll do is it'll go in and get the emails validated. Um, so it just runs it through Dpounce just to make sure they're safe to send. And then if uh, it hasn't found any emails um, at all, then what I'll do is I'll put it into Clagent and then Clagent will basically go on the website and then pull emails from the website. So these could be like info outs, but they could also be, you know, for example, here, like Frank D, I don't know how you say his name, but so on, right? Um, so it will pull those emails. Um, and then this column that you see here is basically a merge of those. So I'm not sure where I stopped there. I think the thing just, the recording just stopped. But um, yeah, this this column here is basically a merge of those two. So if it hasn't found it on the waterfall, then it will try Clagent for like the more generic emails um, and any emails that are listed on the website. And then if it finds those, then, and we've got these um, as well, then it will just basically merge those two into one column. Um, so any of the blanks on here will then get filled in with here so that we've got as much coverage as possible. And then those will get validated as well. And then these here that you can see are final emails. These are the validated emails. Um, and then these were just, I think they're just um, merging of, of everything just to organize. And then one final thing that you can do as well is if in your offer, um, when you're saying like, hey, we help X with Y, um, you can also make it just a little bit more specific with the region that you're targeting. Um, so you don't necessarily need to use AI for this. You can just basically pass the information from the address and say, right, what is, where is this from, right? Because the address is, um, if you look at the address, it's like, yeah, 
this street, this street, New York. So you can just say to AI, like, hey, filter this out and get rid of that stuff and then just put New York. Um, and then we have a list so we can say, hey, we help X with Y um, in New York. So if you were doing another state or you're doing another area, we help X with Y in LA. Um, and then again, it just makes it a little bit more specific. Um, so something else to test out and see how well it actually works on your campaigns. So yeah, so that was pretty much all of it. And then we just pushed it to, um, we pushed it to smart lead. Um, and this is actually a little bit uh, of a while ago now, but um, I just wanted to give you a full run through of like the entirety of the campaign. So pulling the information from Google search, then enriching that information, scraping the website to find uh, like bodies of text, running that bodies of text through uh, AI to create um, first lines, um, and then uh, using AI agents and waterfalls to find the founders' uh, names and email addresses, validating the emails, and then using AI again to write some more creative ideas, and then pushing it to Smart Lead. So that's the entire workflow. I hope you found this video useful. I'm always very happy to like share everything that I'm doing. Um, my goal is always to just give you guys as much helpful and useful information that you can take and have some creative ideas with. So if you do find it value, valuable, then please consider. I can't speak at the moment. Consider subscribing. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.